Hi, I'm Bill Moore with EV World, and you're listening to, or in this case, watching the future in motion. And we're going to be talking today with the founder and CEO of a company called Tropus Technologies, or Tropus Motors, I think they've been renamed now. Uh, his name is John Batista, and we're going to find out more about that little red uh, cube, right? Electric compact utility vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> called the Able behind him. So welcome to EV World, John. Thank you so much for having me today, Bill. It's a pleasure. Now, uh, let's. I always start off with uh, you know asking basically the background of the company. So give me, you know, bring us up to speed. Uh, you guys just came from my perspective. You came out right out of the blue. I hadn't been following this company, and all of a sudden, I get press releases about uh, name changes and things like that. Um, so bring bring me up to speed. Yeah, well, we, uh, we, we here, we actually, most of us have been involved together uh, working at various uh, different electric vehicle related companies now for the past almost 10 years. Uh, okay. Some of our, our uh, myself included, uh, we started at uh, Zero Motorcycles, uh, um, our our director of, of sales and marketing, Scott Harden, came oh, from Zero. I know Scott. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Go ahead. Scott's been working here with us, and uh, um, you know, uh, 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 Julie Les Francois. She came from uh, from Zero, and then uh, the, a number of our team also came from KLD Energy Technologies. Uh, that was our most recent employment together. So uh, we have, you know, a very broad experience in the in the EV market okay. but uh, uh, so the vehicle that you see behind me is the outgrowth of a, a program that we started uh, with uh, Centro Motors uh, going on almost seven years ago now um, we when we were at KLD Energy Technologies had designed a precursor to this vehicle uh, from a, from the back of a napkin and over okay. the space of nine months we get all got it all the way to working prototypes so that long-standing relationship became a request to, to assist them with distribution, which uh, came about uh, about 18 months ago. And uh, we uh, it's, had created so much value around the product and, and uh, making it our own, you know, uh, that we decided to go ahead and, and uh, uh, launch Tropos Motors and have the Able uh, become our first product. Okay, great. Now, so your background is what? Automotive, electrical engineering. What attracted you to, to this, obviously, for some number of years now? Right. Yeah, so we, you know, I started out actually uh, always being a, a vehicle, motorcycle, car enthusiast. And we, and being a mechanical engineer by, you know, by training, uh, have always been Deeply involved in the in the building and developing of, of vehicles and their components, and so uh, I really became attracted to electric vehicles very early on. About 15 years ago, I designed. A, uh, I was asked to consult with a company and design an electric uh, race car, okay. and um, and then from there, the natural progression was to to get into motorcycles, uh, electric motorcycles. Started working at uh, Zero Motorcycles in 2008 when we launched, and uh, helped bring the the what's currently called the S bike to uh, to the you know to um, to reality, and uh, uh, from there went on to design uh, electric drive systems. I always had my my uh, in fingers or involvement in competition, so you know it's it's kind of in my blood. All right. So you were always participating in refuel, whether it's on a uh, little uh, electric scooters that went 80 miles an hour or, right. you know, or in, uh, or in, uh, cars or, or whatever. So it, it, electric vehicles, vehicles in, 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 in general run in our blood here. Okay. Very cool. All right. So let's talk about the able, uh, behind you. This is a, I gather it's a low speed electric vehicle, but can cor correct me if, if I'm wrong on that, designed right. to be essentially a utility vehicle. And what's really in innovative about it is that it's got all different kinds of, for want of a better term, modules that can go on the back of the bed there to do everything from haul cargo to uh, 
be a fire pumper. So <laughs> maybe yeah. so talk about the evolution of, of how that all came about. Well, one of the really great features, and we decided that we would focus on that capability is the versatility of the platform. Um, we have very superior performance. So, so because we use automotive grade componentry as opposed to repurposed golf cart or, or right. ATV, UTV componentry, we're, we're using the suspension and brakes from a, you know, from a full size vehicle. So uh, we have the payload carrying capability that exceeds what a, the LSV classification limits us to, which is 3,000 you know, pounds gross vehicle weight. Right. Um, and we're able to tow, you know, beyond, uh, you know, 2,000, 2,500 pounds. So um, it gives us a lot of, of capability. So in utilizing that capability where we're, we fall in the sweet spot, you know, which is, you know, not as, as, as big as a full-size pickup truck, but, you know, bigger than the, the golf cart or the, or the UTV kind of vehicle, right. um, we're able to uh, have these heavier packages. So like the FRV, um, is, you know, which is our fire response vehicle has this, you know, is a very heavy package, but it doesn't, you know, adversely affect our braking capability. It doesn't affect our handling capability. Um, and so we were able to develop a lot of great upfit packages. What even makes it better is our easy swap system. So because our vehicle, those, these packages are basically attached with uh, six bolts to, to the chassis of our truck, um, uh, a fleet owner can very easily swap these packages from, from one to another. So you only have to really, let's say, buy a handful of chassis and be able to uh, take advantage of, of the full line of our products by being able to very easily swap these packages out. Okay. Well, let's, you know, let's so that's, go ahead. That's a good plus. Yeah, yeah. So talk about the the performance here of this. Now, it I'm if if it's obviously obviously automotive, so you can carry more and have you know better stopping power and things like that. What are we talking about in terms of you know range and the top speed and and those kinds of things? Yeah. So um, well. As far as the range is concerned, uh, we we have a number of different well number of different options available. Uh, we our base package uses a um, maintenance free sealed lead acid battery that's a gel cell, okay, and, um, uh, and that gives you a forty to fifty mile range, uh, utilizing our top speed. Here in California, the top speed is limited by law to twenty five miles an hour, right? But uh, in different parts of the country as as well as different municipalities they can raise that speed to 35 miles an hour but at 25 miles an hour we would uh, with a nominal load you would expect to see about 40 to 50 miles with our base standard battery and we do have an upgraded extended range battery which is an AGM battery and that gives you about 25 percent more range so that 40 miles range becomes a 50 to 60 mile range right that that standard we are uh, developing uh, uh, lithium batteries that, that will be an option that is going to be coming very soon. Um, and our, we've targeted 80 and 160 miles for the, the two um, uh, you know, uh, the two lithium battery options. Right, right. Yeah. But net, now we don't expect that the customer or the end user is going to use all that 160 miles of range. Right. <laughs> it, it allows them to have really good usable range with a much heavier package and right. you know let's say the the terrain is hilly let's say they're in san francisco um our, our torque so our, our vehicle produces a lot of rear, rear wheel torque so we produce 775 foot pounds of rear wow. wheel torque, which means that our great ability on on our our heaviest standard package which is was our cargo box is over 30% on, on the great abilities, which is incredible. Um, we have some video posted online of us doing some uh, towing capacity testing, and we actually have a 1,600-pound trailer with a 1,900-pound uh, 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 Able <laughs> sitting on the trailer being towed by another Able. By another Able, yeah. Up a 7% grade and actually stopping and restarting again and accelerating up the grade. So um, it's not just that we can get a running start at a, at a grade and, and hope to make, you know, and make it at the top at zero right. miles per hour. Right. We're actually able to handle all that. Okay, cool. Um, 
so let, let's talk a little bit about the um, development. Obviously, you're the CEO. You've, you know, all those things of bringing people together and bringing money together and finding the location to do the manufacturing, the supplier. So what, what's been the biggest challenge for you up to this point? Well, um, I, you know, as, as we you know, publish in our, our press releases, uh, um, we went, we just recently, well, about seven months ago, had a, a seed round of funding. Uh, we were able to close it in 10 days. Uh, we were oversubscribed by about uh, 20, 20%. Good. Uh, we, we also had a lot of other interest in, in that we had to turn away, which was really fortunate for us. And I, I think that we're really, really fortunate to be in the area we are, which is uh, Silicon Valley. Um, where so there's a you know a lot of interest in what we're doing. Um, I, I think, to be honest, the biggest challenge, you know, for us has been making sure that we're taking the time to develop the product and our brand the right way. You know, we want to make sure that our brand, um, you know, stands for you know quality, you know, performance, all the things that we're advertising with our vehicle that that we're backing it up. Um, I think it's very important for our, our, you know, it's a very fleet targeted product and what, right. you know, so what do fleet man, owners or operators, what do they want the most? What they want is uptime. You know, that's where they're, they're getting the value. If it's, if it's sitting in the shop, it's, it's in disrepair. If you're waiting for parts, if you're waiting for service and support, it, you know, you're losing money. So yeah. it's a fleet operator. So we want to make sure that, um, uh, that's, you know, really job one for us is that we're giving them a quality product that's supported that they can take advantage of every day. Well, let's, so let's talk about that. What are your sort of marketing plans? Obviously said fleets. So I'm assuming because of its speed restrictions um, that this is going to be more campus, inner city, you know, urban kinds of kinds of situations. So talk about what you see as the market for this. Yeah, well, I, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's, it's, it's you know, right on the head. It's closed campus environments are probably one of the, the more, uh, what do you call it? Uh, interested markets for us. I mean, you know, the fleet owners that, that manage these fleets. And, and, and what's interesting to me is that, um, as we have been approached by a lot of these fleet owners, I have to say that my original estimates of what the size of the of the marketplace is out there is is much bigger. Oh, I mean, that's, we're, <laughs> that's fortunate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, usually sometimes you go, "Oh man, we could sell a million of these." And right. Like, it's only well, electric motorcycles. I right. mean, to go back on one of my markets, but uh, believe it or not, uh, everybody thought that there was going to be this big rush of 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 environmentalists that were going to go run out and buy electric motorcycles. Right. And and, and, and a lot of the brands, you know, and, and zero included, in the first year, we only, the whole market only sold less than a thousand vehicles. Yeah. So there wasn't this big rush to that. So anyway, uh, getting back to your what we were talking about, the, uh, um, you know, it's, so we were focused on uh, public agencies, uh, uh, private fleets and, and, and large fleets, uh, corporate campuses. Uh, at you know university campuses, um, event grounds, uh, production facilities, um, you know, all of these places uh, have a great desire to replace their uh, fossil fuel burning vehicles, you know, with a with an electric solution. Right. And but they don't, you know, a lot of times you'll be driving around and you'll see uh, a maintenance crew with a golf cart with a with a ladder. You know, strapped to the top of the you know, right. plastic cover. Right. So that's yep. that 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 goes to that's indicative of the fact that they'll do they'll work with whatever they can get <laughs> to to, yeah. to meet the goal, even if it means sacrificing the the actual functionality and utility of the vehicle. So uh, we want to give them that functionality, that utility, and also give them the value that they're that they're looking for. Um, and so I mentioned that the we underestimated some of these markets. So we just have completed a, uh, uh, a test of, of, of our vehicle at, um, a couple of very large dairies in the, in the California central Valley. Oh, okay. 
and uh, uh, that <laughs> they love the product, and uh, you know we're uh, going to be modifying the vehicles, or not modifying them, but we're, we're going to be adding on some accessories that we already have available for them. Uh, a high ground clearance, uh, more all-terrain tires, a right. uh, 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 tow hitch. Uh, they want us to remove the uh, – we have a d door delete kit that, uh, that adds uh, mirrors so they can take the doors off. Right. Um, and we were surprised to find that the number of vehicles that they could replace on just one farm was well over 50 vehicles. Really? So, yeah. I mean, it, it, it uh, you know, it was <laughs> – Surprising in a good way, yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, it was great to find out that our vehicle can meet their needs very easily. Yeah. So, so, um, so talk about the well. Let's talk about pricing uh, here first of all. And I don't want to talk about what your production capacity because obviously, you know, I don't see an automated Tesla assembly line behind you there. So, <laughs> turning out twenty five hundred of yeah. these things, a day, you know, a week. So, what you know, kind of, we're going to want to talk a little bit about, you know. What's your production capacity? Um, but let's talk talk pricing first. So, what uh, you know, what would these uh, what are they going to run me? So, our our, our chassis starts at uh, fourteen thousand nine hundred and fifty. That's us our MS, MSRP. Okay. And then the the upfit packages go up from there. You know, so uh, the you know the base package, which is our pickup bed, I believe is you know it's like five hundred dollars for the pickup bed, and then it goes up from there. The you know, the, depending on how, um, you know, how complex the, the, the upfit package is, like the fire, the FRV, or the, um, you know, our, our medical response units, uh, you know, our EMSO and our EMSC, um, you know, that, that you know, uh, can run all, anywhere to an additional, you know, 40 grand plus, depending on all the options. Right. Right. You know, and, and, and that's one of the reasons why we don't have an assembly line is because we're not spitting out the same vehicle over and over again. Uh, we anticipate in, in what we've seen from our response from the, our dealers as well as our, um, you know, our, our, our fleet owners is that there's a lot of accessories that they want to add to 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 customize it to their needs. So um, we're using more of the workstation uh, you know, uh, model of assembly where we have m multiple workstations and the vehicle is assembled um, at that workstation. Now, our, now mind you, our, 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 the way our vehicles and we receive our components from our suppliers uh, makes our vehicles go together very quickly. So it only takes about 10 or 15 out man hours to, to put a vehicle okay. together. It's, it's, it's not. No. It's, sort, it's sort of like if I recall when I toured Zero, that was kind of the approach that that zero had is that there was a stand and then there were parts that were for that and then there was one person who was responsible for whoops, excuse me for assembling that bike right well you know our vehicles are are not that complex i mean yeah. uh you know, because of the the electric drivetrain there's you know there's not a lot of fluids required there's not a lot of specialty tools required we can actually um, assemble a vehicle with you know, uh, basic handles really right